Special use permit that was Cornelius is at the business park. And then 14 is the bottle payment for Keeper Brothers. It took us a while to finish that up to the police station. We had some leaks. I'll make sure we got all those buttoned up before we uh, did the bottle payment. And then number 15 is the bottle payment for the Independence uh, Street Sidewalks project. Any uh, items you'd like to review? No? Um, new ordinances. We have the record plat of Jordan Lane. Um, Along on um, Broadway. Um, number 17 is the Liquor License Review Board uh, appeals. Uh, we talked about this last uh, time we had the uh, appeal that came to you. One of the things that was mentioned was that the um, uh, three people that are board, uh, on the Board of Appeals, I, I actually would uh, appoint them and said, well, it's not good that you, you appoint them and then they review what you do. So we thought that sounded like a fair criticism. And so this uh, makes it where the council appoints all three members of that board. And it also changes to where uh, the appeals will be like the rest of our boards and they will go to the circuit court. So um, that's the change there for that one. Uh, special tax bill for the demolition of dangerous buildings. Good Hope Street, number 18. 19 is uh, from the public hearing in the Reynolds House. Number 20 is the um, uh, agreement uh, for the design build project uh, with the new city hall uh, going to Pencil Construction Company. And uh, 21 is the uh, uh, change near crosswalks for parking. So currently we have 20 feet. Uh, for crosswalks that are by an intersection, but mid block ones we don't have anything, so this uh, makes sure that we do that. I know, um, if there are any questions on those, I just you put out some information regarding the business construction. I don't know if you have any questions of that. I'd like to, if Molly or Victor would like to just comment on that, I know that's an extensive process. Can you kind of walk us through what that's been like for the last six weeks for you guys? Absolutely. So, um, like all, the, all our other design build projects, we pulled out a request for proposals uh, for design build teams. Uh, we had three teams respond to our request. Um, part of that process involves a selection team uh, reviewing their proposals, their written proposals, and then inviting them to come in and do a presentation to that team. Um, we score them based on a variety of criteria that we include and that are um, request for proposals when that goes out. And then based on those uh, interviews and presentations, um, we uh, score them and have a team that comes out on top. Um, in this case, the, the clear choice was Penzl. Um, number one, they scored higher than both of the other teams. Um, but they also are able to provide much more for the allotted budget. Um, so we're getting a lot more for our money which is absolutely essential when we're, we're stewards of the taxpayers' money and trying to use that in the best way possible. So um, they were able to provide us additional um, parking, parking structure, uh, which is something that we've heard a lot of concern about moving over to that location. Um, but because they took a different approach to the additional square footage that we need by building a, independently, um, a structurally independent building, they can save on some of the costs for the underpinning of the existing structures. That saves money that can go into parking structures. So they really did put a lot of thought and effort into their proposal. And again, um, just providing a lot more bang for the buck. Who was part of, I know it was you and Victor, who was part of your interview team? Uh, it was Kelly Green, Victor Brownlees, and myself. I know a lot of people have been curious to see, you know, what's it going to look like in, okay. in everything. Everybody always wants to know uh, what that will uh, be, but we're really um, still in that process. The selection was based on qualifications, so their background, their understanding of the project, a design, design philosophy, and whatnot. So now that we have a team on board, if the council authorizes this contract, then the first thing would be to have a design workshop to kick off the project, and we'll really dive into um, square footage needs, adjacency floor plans, site plans, and then also architecture, how we're going to blend the old with the new. And you can list how many with this, this team, we've 
worked with them before. Can you talk about, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, this was uh, the newest fire station? Yes, yeah, so we have worked with Pencil before in the past for the sportsplex. The indoor sportsplex was done by Pencil as well as Fire Station 4. Um, and we, we've worked with them previously. I think they also did an annex at Fire Station 2 as well. Okay. At this time, I'll call the regular session to order with uh, call the order and roll call. Here. Bob Parks. Here. Bobby Cover. Present. Stacy Kinder. Here. Shelby Moore. Here. Dan Preston. Here. Nick Thomas. Here. I'll entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. Motion to second by hand. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The motion carries. Public hearings. We have a public hearing this evening to consider a request to rezone the property at 623 North Main Street from M1 Light Manufacturing Industrial PD Plan Development and R4 Medium Density Multifamily Residential to CBD, which is Central Business District. Yes, ma'am. Right. Time to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Elisa Ferris. I am president of the Reynolds House Foundation Board of Directors. So um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about why we're asking for rezoning, and you basically said it. Currently, our property is three zones with the addition of the overlay of the historic overlay, so it's a historic locally and nationally registered property. Um, so the reason we want to be Central Business District um, has also been mentioned prior in the City Council meeting in that um, in the comprehensive plan, both in the past and I'm hoping in the future, the idea for the development of this part of the downtown area is to um, the majority central business district. Um, by being CBD, it just ensures that this property can move forward and have new life. And so that's essentially um, why we're asking um, you to approve this. Um, do you have any questions for me about it? Okay. No? Um, thank you. Thank you for all your work. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? Any other public comment on the public hearing? If not, I will close the public hearing. Is there anybody here to uh, appear before the council for any item that is on the agenda this evening? I don't see anybody getting up. If not, we will move on to the consent agenda. Eric? Number 19-163, Ordinance for the Director of Honor and Second Subdivision, Ordinance for the Director of Honor and Second Subdivision. Number 19-164, Ordinance for the Director of Honor and Second Subdivision, Ordinance for the Director of Honor and Second Subdivision. Number 19-170, a resolution authorizing city manager to execute a demolition contract with one with Sarah Jr. for the demolition of buildings located at 1217 North Water Street and 33 North Henderson Avenue in the state of Cape Arlington. 19-171, a resolution authorizing city manager to execute license and indemnity agreement with Cape Public Schools for installation of 16 boulders at 2880 Hopper Road in the city of Cape Verde, Missouri. 19-172, a resolution authorizing city manager to execute a contract with Anthony Blue Cross for employee health insurance services in the city of Cape Verde, Missouri. 19-173, a resolution authorizing city manager to execute a contract with Delta Dental for employee dental insurance services in the city of Cape Verde, Missouri. 19-174, a resolution authorizing city manager to execute a license and indemnity agreement with Brian A. Tracy and Deborah A. Tracy for an irrigation system and other improvements at 689 Highland Drive in the city of Cape Verde, Missouri. From 19-176, a resolution authorizing city manager to execute a release of lease for property located at 306 South Denton Street and the federal open law bank with affordable housing grant program in the city of Cape Verde, Missouri. 19-177, a resolution authorizing city manager to execute license and indemnity agreement with Evil Enterprises LLC for installation of awning at 120 Broadway in the city of Cape Verde, Missouri. And 19-178, a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute license and indemnity agreement with the Highlands at Hopper Crossing HOA LLC for the installation of a monument sign at 999 Lotion Bar in the city of Cape Verde, Missouri. 
And then before you, the consent agenda. So moved. Motion by Ryan. Second. Second by Shelley. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. New ordinances. Bill number 19 165. Ordinance approving the erect plan of Journey Lane Subdivision. First reading. Submit. Second. Any discussion? For informational purposes, this is the uh, corner of Broadway and Sprig, where they're changing four lots to two. Uh, I think that's where that old R used to be there. Uh, mm -hmm. Last call. Corner. Yeah. Last call. Yeah. Yeah. Last call. <coughs> Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Bill number 19-166, an ordinance amending chapter 5 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Girard, Missouri, regarding the Liquor License Review Board and Appeals. So moved. Second. By Ryan, second by Robbie. Any discussion? Yeah. Um, once, I mean, I, I, I know this has to go second and third reading, but what's the process after that? I mean, how, how long before this uh, uh, appointments are made and this group is up and running? I know there's one public member of that group now, yes. all two city employees. Yeah, well, I, we'll move pretty quickly so we can uh, populate uh, the board. Um, so I would say once it's approved, uh, the next meeting we would look into the populate the board. I mean, I, I just, I don't, I, I'm not sure who the public member is, but you know, I noticed in the, 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 the change uh, in the ordinance that it, it asked for a chief review officer you might consider that person, who, who, whoever it is, since they have some institutional knowledge of that, uh, what the function of that group it should be. Yeah. Yeah, we have the... I'm trying to think of who the vote. The current member? Yes. Brandon Cooper. Brandon Cooper, yeah. So, Brandon might be a good candidate. Yeah. Start out with first. He's been there for the first marriage process. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, uh, definitely if we're bringing in two members of the public that don't have a lot of experience, it'd be good to have someone on there that, that, can, that has some knowledge of the way that things have worked. Good point. Good point. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Bill number 19-167. In order to authorizing the issuance of a special tax bill for probably located at 1018 Good Hope Street, the demolition of a dangerous building under provisions of Chapter 7 of the Code of Horses of the City of Cape Town, Missouri. So, question by Dan, second by Nate. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carried. Bill number 19 168. An ordinance amending the chapter 30 of the Code of Ordinance of the City of Cape Carmel by changing the zoning of property 623 North Main Street in the City and County of Cape Carmel, Missouri from M1 PD and R4 to CDB. So, second. Motion by Ryan, second by Robbie. Any discussion? I think it's great they're finally doing something to this old place. If it's it's uh, been needed for a long time, it's going to serve a new purpose once it's finished. So, thank okay. you. Thank you. Have you had a chance to? I've driven by it and seen the outside of it, have not been inside of it. Give me a call. Okay, we'll do. All in further discussion. If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Bill number 19-169. Dash 19, 19 the ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement for professional and construction services with Penzo Construction Company Incorporated. The new city hall located at 44 North Marmor in the city of Cape Girardeau. First reading. So I moved. Second. Motion by Robbie, second by Nate. Any further discussion? Mayor, I'd just say that um, after reading Deputy City Manager uh, Maynard's comments, and, and I know there's some enhancements with this group, and I look forward to it. The historic preservation architect, uh, the parking facility, um, and, and, and something about the process too, and I think it's unique, and I, it shouldn't go unnoticed, is that while two staff members, we have a contracted staff member that was part of that too, uh, with Kelly Green and her and her company. So I, I really 
feel good about the process. Let's can't wait for the project. Thank you all for heading that up, and I look forward to seeing what what's what comes up next. Thank you for this to get started. Spanish Street enhancement too. I mean, some of his other things. So we're going to talk about that in just a minute. All those in favor, Bill Number Nineteen Dash One Sixty Nine. Aye. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Section 26-246 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Cape Girl regarding parking near crosswalks. So moved. Second. Motion by Ryan, second by Robbie. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. We have two sets of appointments this evening. Appointments to the Golf Course Advisory Board, and those appointments were... Keith Sander and Nate Severino. And we have appointments to the Planning and Zoning Commission, and those appointments were Bruce Skinner and Doug Spooler. I'll entertain a motion first for the Golf Course Advisory Board. Second. Second by Robbie, second by Dan. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. And that motion carries. Any uh, appointments to the Planning and Zoning Commission? So moved. Second by Dan. Second. Second by Ryan. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Uh, as we get into other business, I want to remind you all that uh, our next meeting on the 18th, uh, Scott had asked we have uh, some discussion about uh, TTF 6, uh, the projects. Uh, maybe uh, and there's one thing that that came to my mind that, that I think is critical when it comes to TTF-6, and I've asked uh, Scott to kind of do a little research with, with what uh, has been done with this in the past. Doing City Hall and having, having uh, Pencil as part of that project, redoing that staircase, which is dilapidated as it comes down to Spanish Street, in my mind is the perfect time to realize one of the downtown strategic plan goals and to add additional parking on Spanish Street. Uh, that original plan called for cutting into that hillside. Uh, I know there's some rock there, but it would entail putting in maybe a retaining wall of some sorts and angle parking, which would I think would give 30, uh, don't quote me on this, it's 36 more parking places maybe. Uh, it would enhance parking for downtown. It would enhance parking in front of the courthouse if people want to walk up the steps. Uh, it would give us a chance to maybe, if you have a retaining wall, to do a mural on that wall and make it some, you know, a thing of beauty. Uh, at the same time, there are other projects that were proposed along Spanish Street to do the same lights that were done on Main Street, so they kind of coincide with that project. Uh, and do some other repairs. So uh, I've asked them to go and look at what the cost estimates were for that, how much money is in the riverfront fund for the casino, which, which goes towards those kind of projects, and maybe let us know on the 18th where that stands and whether or not we as a council, since we're doing City Hall now, would want to consider making this part of TTF 6. And we don't know what the costs are yet. Uh, still got a lot of investigation to do. We don't know. There's still some questions about the uh, possible grant. Uh, there's been questions out there about whether, since we have so many projects that have been identified, do we want to do all these at once and expand this to six years or seven years, like we've done with the other past two tax uh, renewals? Uh, or do we want to leave it five years? And, cut some things out. Uh, depends on, I, I'd like us to have the, the discussion so that it's out there before the public and we can get input on what people think uh, so we know what to do as we go forward. We have some time. We don't have to really make this a 
a resolution until January, I think, so, uh, to put it on the ballot in April. So be thinking about those projects and what your thoughts are, and we will have a discussion at our next meeting in November. Any other business? I think a motion to adjourn, Mayor. Motion to adjourn. Any second? Second. All those in favor say that? Aye. 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 Aye.